Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnes and welcome to the Science at ESA vodcast. In this episode, we'll take a look at the Earth's Moon and Titan, two very different natural satellites in our solar system, and find out about the two ESA missions that have explored them. The eight planets orbiting the Sun are accompanied by over 150 natural satellites. These moons orbiting their companion planets are worlds in their own right, with a wide variety of shapes, sizes and landscapes. Some moons have active processes, others preserve a record of the solar system's history and some even have atmospheres. Let's focus on two very diverse natural satellites, the Earth's moon and Titan, Saturn's largest moon. We'll start with Earth's only natural satellite, the one with which we are most familiar and has been well explored since the dawn of the space age. The moon is an airless world with an ancient and heavily cratered surface that has changed very little in the last four billion years. It bears scars of the events that have shaped the rocky planets of the inner solar system. As Earth's closest celestial neighbor, it is within our reach to observe and explore. The moon's surface has two types of terrain, the relatively younger, dark-colored regions of the Maria and the primitive, light regions of the highlands. The samples of rock returned to Earth by the Apollo astronauts and Russian landers have been thoroughly studied. They have provided a template for dating the surfaces of the inner planets and insight into how the moon formed. It is thought that about four and a half billion years ago, a Mars-sized object smashed into the Earth, leaving a cloud of debris that accreted to form the moon. The energy released in this process created an object with seas of magma. As the moon cooled and started to solidify, it was bombarded with asteroids, some so large that their impacts stripped and split the crust. These craters later flooded with lava, forming the Maria. Despite the many missions to the moon and the intensive study of the collected rock samples, scientists have barely scratched the surface of understanding this nearby celestial object. In 2003, Europe launched SMART-1, the first small mission for advanced research in technology. Europe's first mission to the moon marked the beginning of a series of missions designed to prepare the technologies needed for future exploration of the solar system. This mission aimed to voyage to the moon, testing a new propulsion system along the way and new instrument technologies once it arrived. It was a masterpiece of miniaturization with everything needed for propulsion, communications and instrumentation packed into a cube just one meter across. SMART-1 took a leisurely route to the moon powered by a solar electric propulsion system. Within the system, an ion engine made use of the Hall effect, where a current flowing across a magnetic field induces an electromotive force at right angles to both the current and the magnetic field. SMART-1's propulsion system was powered by the spacecraft's solar panels and the induced electromotive force was used to accelerate xenon ions that provided the thrust. This type of engine releases its ionized gas propellant at a much greater velocity than traditional chemical rockets. This means that they are extremely fuel efficient. By conservation of momentum, an ion engine can deliver about 10 times more thrust per kilogram compared to a chemical rocket Ion engines may take longer to accelerate, but they can provide a sustained thrust for a long period of time and potentially reduce the journey time over long distances. The testing of the ion engine was extremely successful. It worked flawlessly. Smart One's unconventional amble to the moon took 16 months, but it used just 60 liters of fuel. This amount would enable a car to travel just a few hundred kilometers. After launch, the ion engine was fired intermittently to gradually expand the spacecraft's elliptical orbit around the Earth. At around 60,000 kilometers from the Moon, the gravitational effect of the Moon and the Earth 
balance at the first Lagrange point, L1. Here, Smart One was captured by the Moon's gravitational field, and the ion engine was used to propel the spacecraft even closer to the Moon. When Smart One entered into orbit around the Moon, the mission's next objective was to perform science experiments with three novel instruments. The demonstration of a compact X-ray spectrometer, or DKIX, used brand new technology in an experiment to detect X-rays emitted by chemical elements excited by incoming high-energy solar radiation. DKIX made the first detection of calcium from lunar orbit and looked at the differences in the amount of titanium, magnesium and silicon between the near and far sides of the Moon. Information about the abundance of these elements on the lunar surface will help to determine if a large impact on Earth did lead to the creation of the Moon. The Advanced Moon Microimager Experiment, AMI, was a pocket-sized, high-resolution camera. This experiment imaged the lunar surface from different angles under different lighting conditions. These images were combined to produce maps and a geological context for the planetary processes that are shaping the lunar landscape, such as impact craters, tectonic wrinkles, volcanic features and space weathering. The illumination of these regions could be important for future explorers. Another compact experiment, the Smart One Infrared Spectrometer, SIR, was the first instrument of its kind to be used in a lunar mission. SIR employed new technology to map the distribution of minerals in the lunar rocks. The composition of these minerals reflects the physical and chemical conditions under which the rocks were formed. Determining what minerals are found and their location on the Moon provides information about the Moon's origin, the evolution of the crust and the time of key events such as volcanism and asteroid bombardment. After spending 18 months orbiting the Moon, the Smart One mission came to an end in September 2006, when the spacecraft made a controlled impact into the surface of the Moon. When Smart One visited the Moon, it was the only spacecraft orbiting the Earth's natural satellite. It was therefore able to support countries that were planning new lunar missions by helping to test communication systems. This collaboration saw the next generation of science instruments from Europe's Smart One fly in 2008 on Chandrayaan-1, India's first mission to the Moon. Europe has also provided spacecraft and ground operations support services for the first Chinese lunar mission, Chang'e-1. The Chinese National Space Administration and ESA have shared the data returned by this mission. Many moons in the solar system are airless worlds similar to our moon. However, there are some that are very different. Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest in the solar system, is strikingly different from the Earth's only natural satellite. Titan is the only moon in the solar system with a significant atmosphere. It is a curious world that appears to bear similarities to the Earth to other icy moons in the outer solar system and has some features that are unique. In 1997, NASA, ESA and the Italian Space Agency launched Cassini Huygens, a mission designed to explore the entire Saturnian system, including the planet itself, its magnetosphere, the famous rings and many of its satellites, in particular Titan and a number of the icy moons.